Our final guest for this week is Tony Cruz, who's an amazing dog trainer. He's brought Motley in. I've got to tell you, Tony, Motley's lovely. He's, uh, you could say he's enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I want him, anyway. So. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. What breed is Motley? Because I've never seen a dog quite like that um, before. Do you want the full answer? Yeah, go on. <laughs> he's a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. A what? A toller for sure. It's a lot easier to say <laughs> toller. <laughs> if I want to get away from someone very quickly, I just say toller. I've never <laughs> even heard of that breed. Um, it, it's rather unique. Um, they come from Nova Scotia and Canada. Right. Um, quite versatile. Um, bred as a gun dog, so yeah, yeah. quite hard working. Yeah. Need a lot of exercise. Wow. Um, a lot of outlet for, for fun and games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But he's beautiful. He's yeah, absolutely he's, he's got a beautiful coat. It's a lovely colour. Yeah, he's, he's slightly different looking to, to some dogs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's really, really good. So, how long have you been dog training then? Um, professionally, about two and a half years now. Um, it's how I make my, my bread. Yeah. Um, but I've always been dog training when I've been doing other things. It's always a, a bit of a sideline. Right. Um, and I've got the opportunity to go professional and right. um, it's been going very well. Excellent. Uh, got Excellent. A, got some classes running and I do one to ones around people's houses. Yep. Um, classes are very popular. Yeah, yeah. And so, we have a lot of fun. So you're kind of a, a modern day Barbara Woodhouse then? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, things have moved on slightly since good old Barbara, but uh, y yes, yeah, I yeah. bet they have too. Um, so it's, we're both the same sort of things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, if you've got any questions for Tony uh, about your dog, maybe you need a hand with something you know a bit of a help bit of a point in the right direction about how to get your dog to behave properly or whatever it is do give us a call 01702 45 50 60 you can have a chat with tony and we'll see if we can help you this morning now we do have roger tims on the line at the moment hi roger hello there how are you all right i'm fine thank you jolly good well you've got tony here so let's hear it what's your problem Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Roger. Good morning. Um, got a, f uh, a four month old um, Cocker Spaniel. Um, quite intelligent, will sit and stay, um, will come when it's called, but it jumps, it's constantly jumping up and, and nipping people. And I don't know how, which command we should be using or how, whether we should just distract the dog or, or how we should de deal with it. Okay, well, jumping up and nipping is quite common with a puppy. Um, it's a, a, a huge way of getting the attention of the owner, obviously. Uh, nips can be quite painful, and with puppy teeth, they're extremely sharp. Yeah. Uh, it's not really acceptable, obviously, but what the puppy is only trying to do is to greet, to say hello, basically. Yeah, I, I wonder whether it was enthusiasm rather than anger. Oh, it's certainly not anger. Um, you know, put that out of your mind. There's no, no anger from a puppy of that age. Uh. Uh, possibly a little frustration, um, but but more so he wants to say hello to you. So right. your job is to actually train him so that he's in the correct position in order for you to say hello to him. Right. So what I would work on is a, is a very solid sit. Um, get that sit in place, and then you can go down to his level and nice, gentle praise. That would be your your greeting. Yeah. Well, what we tend to do is we're using eye contact. Mm -hmm. We turn our back. We, and we give her a treat when she sits down there. But then, of course, as soon as you turn your back and she's had her treat, she's jumping up again, you see. Yes, indeed. I mean, it is, it is a, a, a very consistent thing that you're going to have to do. Right. Um, every time the dog jumps up and you kind of fuss the dog, you're you're taking a few steps back. So so stick with that. The dog then learns that by sitting is much more rewarding because not only does the dog get to say hello to you, but she gets a reward as well. Right. So you're okay, strengthening then. that sit just by doing that. Should we persevere then, do we? Persevere. Be very, very consistent. As soon as someone comes along and, and fusses her when she's jumping up, um, just have a little uh, word with that person. Just say, look, you know, my dog's in training. Please ignore my dog when it's jumping up. Should, should, should we use the command down? Um, I wouldn't use any command at the moment other than sit. So you want to build a nice right. solid sit in okay. without anyone present. Um, you know, you want to rehearse it before it happens. So right, you're going to practice okay, a then. nice solid sit. When the person arrives, you're going to get your dog to sit. Yep. Um, and then reward the dog for sitting. If you can't get the sit, then as long as the four paws are on the floor, you can reward that. But I will go no, for a solid sit. So you want to build up no the sit there. first. So is that all right? Yeah, she immediately sits. There's no problem there. Okay, then you yeah. go down to her level, or the, the the person visiting goes down to her level and rewards rewards her a nice nice and low as well. Don't have the roar too high because that will encourage jumping. So keep the roar nice and low, um, and just stick with it. It does happen, believe me. Puppies are not easy, um, but just stick with it. Be consistent. Uh, all right then. 
Thank yeah, you well very much indeed. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thank you now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, puppies, of course, uh, very young dogs, I suppose, are going to be very enthusiastic and uh, leaping about all over the place. Mm. Uh, and how do you, I mean, because you were talking there about establishing a good solid sit, as you mm. put it. How do you go about doing that? Um, as I said, you, you want to practice a sit when the situation is not required. So, in a nice, quiet environment, mm. uh, where there's no distractions, um, what you can do is you can lure the sit, so you can have the food just on the end of your hand, just crank your hand up over the dog's nose, over the dog's head, and as soon as the bottom hits the floor, you yep. then say sit, and right. the dog gets a reward. Ah, right, so, okay. you're actually telling the dog what it is initially, because obviously they don't know what a sit is at that age. Of course, of So, course. you actually give them the cue initially, um, build that up, and the more the, the more the dog gets rewarded for that the more it's going to do it yeah cool. so then when you do get a huge distraction like a visitor and that is a huge distraction and you ask for a sit you're more likely to get it yeah so don't just say sit when you've got the distraction because you're going to set yourself up for failure <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. it's quite a science really quite a it science is. It's to behavior, it, it? really yeah totally I mean, totally yeah. Yeah. yeah okay well we'll uh, have a break for a song we'll come back and have another chat with tony in a minute don't forget if you've got problems with your dog that you think tony might be able to help with then do give us a call 01702 4550 60 is the number to dial. Just great songs on Sunday Live this morning with the Jackson 5 and ABC. So our final guest this morning is Tony Cruz, dog trainer. Uh, and we're inviting your calls if you have problems with your pet. Uh, then do give Tony a call, 01702 45 50 60. We have Linda on the line at the moment. Uh, Linda, good morning. Good morning. I think you have you said you have an 18-month-old Sharpe, is that right? I have, yes. Okay, so what sort of problems are you having? Um, it's mainly feeding times. Um, I put the food down for her, and she's normally as good as gold, and she'll, ask, she'll sit down and ask for it. And then if I potter around her, she's fine. But if my partner walks in the room, or anybody else, she just goes for them. I start Ooh. growling, and she's quite aggressive. Right. Ooh, nasty. Okay. I, I don't know how to deal with her. Yeah, Tony, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, morning, Linda. Morning. Oh, yeah. Um, first of all, I'd say to any dog issue, if there's any sudden change of behaviour or anything not looking quite right, always a good idea just to visit the vets, just to make sure there's no underlying health issue. Right, okay. Um, that, will be, that will be for any sort of sudden change in dog behaviour, if your dog's acting a bit odd all of a sudden. Um, and also, all I'm doing now, I'm giving you some pointers and some hints. Um, there's no substitute for actually getting a, a professional trainer around or a behaviourist around. Just have a look um, for a little bit of an observation and to look at the case history. Um, however, I'll give you a few little pointers. Um, to me, what it sounds like is, is that your dog is perhaps food guarding around other people other than yourself. Yeah. Could that be right? So perhaps your dog feels a little bit insecure. Is it your partner that it's barking at? She, she'll go for my partner. My mum is quite elderly now. She won't come here because she's scared of the dog. Okay, so, so your dog is probably quite comfortable with you around the food and not with other people. Um, so what you've got to do is get these other people who your dog is not quite um, comfortable with to actually make it a, a nice event. So perhaps what you'd do is you'd, you'd get um, your partner to hand feed your dog. Um, right, so get okay. move the food bowl for it initially. Um, yeah. Just get some dry food, preferably outside of the kitchen, but somewhere else, and just just make it a nice happy event. So one okay. by one, your your partner would hand feed the dog. Um, make it a jolly jolly event. Maybe toss a little bit bit of food over there. Um, hand feed the little bit of food to the dog straight away. Um, the, what the dog's got to see is that your partner is not a threat. Your partner yeah. provides something nice rather than take something away. Right, okay. Um, well, I don't know if there's ever down. been a, a situation in the past where your partner might have actually removed the food bowl or taken a, a, a toy away no, or something no. that your dog values. No, nothing like that. She'll sit down and I'll say to her, sit down then, and she'll sit down and I'll say, what do you say? And she'll lift a paw as if to say please. Mm. And then she goes to a food bowl. Oh yeah, I mean, she's probably very, very comfortable with you, but she might perceive your partner or anybody else as a threat around the food. Right, okay. Um, your dog values the food extremely highly, um, and might be a little bit anxious around other people, so it's up to these other people to gently and nice and easily hand feed your dog, make it a nice event. So your dog sees these other people as providers, rather than, you know, someone that might take the food away and be a threat. Yeah, so even definitely. if your partner just hand feeds, maybe fills the bowl up and then puts the bowl down, but provides rather than takes away. 
Okay, I'll give it a try. Good stuff. All right, Linda, <laughs> thanks, thanks for your call. Good luck with that. Hope it works Thank out you. well. All right. Thank, Thank you, you now. Bye bye. Have a good day. So there we go. Uh, Tony's here to answer your dog related questions. If you're having problems, do give us a call 01702 45 50 60, and we'll be having a chat with Tony again in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> with Beyonce and Love on Top. It's 10 to 12, so we've just got time for one more call, I think. Uh, uh, Tony Cruz is with us talking about dog training. And, Tony, we were just talking about dogs, about if somebody's thinking about getting a dog for the first time. Uh, because, as I say, I'm, I'm not a dog owner. I've never had a dog, but I can see the appeal. And, I'm, you know, if, if I was in a different lifestyle, I would have loved to have had a dog. What's the best way to, to think about approaching getting a dog for the first time? Yes, yeah, so well, I would say the rescue centres at this time, moment in time, are actually banged out with dogs. Um, really? They can do with all the help they can possibly get. Yeah. Uh, so just find your nearest uh, rescue centre, um, book an appointment if necessary, and have a little chat and have a little walk around with, with one of the owners, right. one of the staff right. there. Um, they're fairly knowledgeable. They know what sort of dog will possibly suit your lifestyle. Um, and I'm sure there'll be a dog in there for, for the right person. Yeah. You know? I mean, are there particular breeds that are, that are better as first time for, for first time owners um, I'm a little bit partial to greyhounds uh, are you yeah oh really they're, they're exceptional for first first time dog owners because they're very very placid generally they've done their time in the track yep. so all they want to do is sleep um, <laughs> little short walks yep. sleep and eat uh, but they're a great starter you really get you really get to know a dog through through a greyhound yeah um, so in general they're a good first first dog and there's a plen plenty of staffies out there that that need homes and they're, they're fantastic with people oh, I like. um, yeah. Fantastic with children, um, you know the they could do with a, a, f a few homes i think yeah. <laughs> yeah. well we've things, got yeah. uh, we got ron on the line uh, for a final question this morning hi ron how are you i'm oh, very well thank you good thanks for your call so uh, how can tony help you today uh, i'm looking after a little dog for my granddaughter who's not very well i've had her for about a month just over a month now she come into season about christmas and um, i'm just wondering when she could go out again for a walk because she is still a little bit swelled up at the back Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine, yeah. I mean, season in a bit. She lasts for approximately 21 days, so you'll probably come into the end of it. She's probably coming to the end of it now. Yeah. Um, she's most receptive around a sort of 7 to 10 day period. Yeah. Um, that's the, the, the time when you don't really necessarily want your dog around male dogs. Um, no, no. You can Just see the, the potential problems before. there. Yeah, um, but, but now, providing she's on a lead, um, yeah. I would suggest that it's okay. You know, keep, don't let her off lead. Yeah. Um, but but now's the time to start getting her back out. And poor thing's probably desperate for a walk anyway. Oh, she is, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit of management, um, you know, uh, take her out, by all yeah. means. Yeah, she's a lovely dog, but I'm just looking after her for me uh, granddaughter, because she's not well. I've never had a bitch before. I've always had dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a lovely little thing. And uh, But we're thinking about having a, a spider uh, when it's ready. Could you tell me how long? Yeah, is this her first season? No, no, she's had a set of puppies. Okay, yeah. Well, what I would do there, I was, I would get advice from your vet on that one. Um, yeah. You know, I'm a dog trainer, so I don't want to get too into that. No. Um, so I'd pop along to the vet, um, have a word with him. Yeah. But, but regarding walking a, a dog in heat, it, it is a bit of a gamble. You don't want to be doing it, certainly between the seven to ten day period, no. um, around male dogs. Um, yeah. But it can be done if it's remote, if it's a remote area. Yeah. The dog does need exercise, so if you're not walking your dog, think about little exercises you can do in the house. Yeah. I've uh, little got mind games. Garden. Hide and seek. Yeah. Um, lots of exercise in the garden because they're still going to need that exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she does get a lot. Of, uh, you know, we keep chucking balls down the bottom of the garden, quite a long garden. But uh, she does love her walks. Good. Well, I would suggest now um, pop her on the lead and just see how it goes, really. Um, yeah. You know, take her for a little walk around the block. Yeah. See how, see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that, Ron. Right. Thanks for your call. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tony. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good day. Bye. Cheers now. Bye bye. So there we are. Well, Tony, thank you for coming in thank today. You. It's really been enjoyed absolutely it. yeah. fantastic as always, and uh, we, no doubt we'll have you back at I some look point. To the next time, yeah, yeah. indeed. So thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thanks, and Adrian. thanks for all your calls on your doggy problems this morning. Uh, to take us up to news, then a real classic for you from Stevie Wonder now.